Are two screens better than one when it comes to tablets? Sony sure hopes so with the Tablet P, which is now available from AT&T. This clamshell device has two 5.5-inch displays, and it has a Tegra 2 processor with dual-core power inside, and it also connects to AT&T's HSPA Plus network, so you get 4G-like speeds on the go. We're going to tell you everything we like and what we don't about this dual-screen device. So as you can see, the Tablet P has two displays. They both measure 5.5 inches, and you get a resolution of 1024 by 480 in both. So it's pretty high res, and you can use these displays in a couple of cool ways. One is if you have the email app, let's say, and so the message that you have highlighted will open in the top screen, and all of your, your list of messages will be in the bottom display. And Sony has reached out to uh, 40 plus developers to show people what they can do when you have uh, two screens. Uh, a good example is News 360. So we'll open that up real quick. So you can see here is that you have the latest headlines streaming on the right hand side and all the categories on the left. And if you click on a story, you'll see all of these thumbnails will load up here and then you can tweet directly from the app. So this is a really good example of the dual screen uh, design working the way it should. But there's also a lot of apps that don't take advantage of uh, the two screens, and a good example is Facebook. So what you have here is just an application loading on the top and a sort of a blank canvas on the bottom, so that's a missed opportunity. The good news is that Sony loads this device with uh, an app store so you can shop for applications that are designed or optimized for both displays um, from one place. But where it takes you is the Android market, which also only runs on one screen. There are some other examples of dual screen apps that work well. The browser, for example, actually stretches across both screens. And because this is running Android Honeycomb, uh, you have a tab browser, which is really nice. But you can see here that the, the design is a little distracting because this bezel is a little thicker than we like. But you still get a lot of real estate, a lot more real estate than you would from a typical smartphone, and something that weighs a, you know, a little under a pound, and it's about an inch thick. So it does fit in your breast pocket, but you're definitely going to notice that it's there. Otherwise, you know, you know, the design is pretty nice and smooth. You have a, a back 5 megapixel camera here. You have your volume controls and everything else on the left-hand side, including micro USB. And you can access the huge battery as well as the micro SD right underneath this cover. And the left-hand side has a small and relatively weak speaker. But Sony does try to sweeten the deal with some of the uh, entertainment applications that it preloads, including Video Unlimited, Music Unlimited, and their video player. So we'll give you an example of what the video player is like. So we, just, we downloaded an episode of Tosh.0. Oh. So you'll see that the playback controls are along the bottom, and you have the video window up here. So it's entertaining, but you don't get a full HD experience up here because this 5.5-inch displays sort of split the real estate. Although there are some applications like the Sony Reader where you can flip this on its side and read a book just like you would you know, a regular analog book. So one of the selling points of the Tablet P is supposed to be its access to the PlayStation Store. So you can access games uh, from your original PlayStation 1 as well as some PSP titles. They all go for about 6 bucks. Uh, but if you dig a little bit deeper, that sense of nostalgia sort of gives way to frustration when you look at some of the titles. So, for example, you have Cool Borders, which we've tried. And you can see that it has old school controls on the bottom and, you know, some controls up here. It doesn't even take up the full length of the display. This is not touch enabled. You have to use these controls in order to, to play the game, including pressing start. And the graphics are okay for a mid-90s to late-90s title, uh, but the controls aren't that easy to use and not that intuitive, especially for people who have sort of grown up using touch devices. So nice diversion, but definitely not a reason to spend $399 on a tablet. So overall, you know, the Sony Tablet P is a very intriguing device, um, but it doesn't take full advantage of both displays in, in all applications. And also, the 4G speeds are sort of faux G because it's HSPA+, not AT&T's latest and greatest LTE. And for $399, we would just expect a little bit more. We like the concept of the Sony Tablet P, but the execution is a little half-hearted.